Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, which is the world's largest and oldest private uh, cancer center, is an institution focused on the diagnosis and treatment of patients with cancer. And the pathology department plays a critical role in this process. It was founded in 1884, uh, actually by a gynecologist called Marion Sims, who felt that there really wasn't adequate cancer care for women in New York. The Department of Pathology at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center has always been home to diagnostic heavy hitters, I would say. Um, the original chairman of the department was James Ewing, after whom Ewing sarcoma is named. Following him, uh, Fred Stewart took over the department in 1939. The department had many luminaries as staff members, including Dr. Myron Malamud, uh, one of the pioneers in the development of flow cytometry. Dr. Stephen Sternberg, who was the founding editor of the American Journal of Surgical Pathology. Dr. William Gerald, who did some of the early molecular works on a number of of new entities that he described uh, together with my personal mentor, Dr. Juan Rosai, who made incredible contributions to the practice of surgical pathology. The mission of the entire institution from its very inception has been to combine excellence in patient care along with cutting edge research and education. And I think our department is a, a good example of how that can work. Our subspecialty training program is specifically designed to afford uh, our trainees a broad uh, exposure to all of the subspecialty areas in pathology so that all of our uh, trainees will spend time rotating with me on the neuropathology service, uh, whether they like that or not. Um, they will spend time rotating through GU pathology, GI pathology, breast pathology, lung pathology. All of the areas are covered. My colleagues uh, all have subspecialty interests. This is really what cutting edge cancer care uh, is. It means that the patient is being taken care of uh, in all instances by individuals have, who have devoted themselves to knowing everything that they can about the particular type of tumor that is uh, involved. Uh, I find that there isn't a day that goes by that I am not confronted by something a little bit different than anything that I've ever really seen before or confronted by f before. That keeps the brain young. Where my modern pathology is really going is a more precise molecular classification of a patient's disease, which can then inform their placement in specific clinical trials, and even further down the road uh, when the treatments are actually proven and informed. What my lab was involved in recently was the discovery of a specific molecular marker uh, that affects lower grade tumors. We identified mutations in a gene called ATRX that characterize a broad subclass of those slowly evolving um, astrocytomas. Uh, that eventually become glioblastomas, and, which was exciting to us because it offers a variety of different therapeutic angles that we can take. We were able to develop an immunostain for ATRX, which we're actually now using in the clinic to identify ATRX mutant tumors within the broader spectrum of gliomas. And so it was very gratifying to be able to make a discovery in the lab and actually translate it into the clinical setting within you know, a period of a few months. The difference between test development and research is that research is predominantly an effort of discovery. Discovery of new abnormalities, discovery of the correlations between specific abnormalities and tumors or other diseases. Test development is the translation of those discoveries into clinical tests. Molecular testing is used in many ways to guide patient therapy. We currently use a variety of technologies to detect abnormalities in tumors. FISH, or fluorescence in situ hybridization, allows us to detect chromosomal abnormalities. Some of these abnormalities include chromosomal rearrangements or copy number changes in chromosomes. Next generation sequencing, or massively parallel sequencing, is a variety of technologies that allow us to sequence large numbers of DNA molecules. We can sequence millions or billions of DNA molecules simultaneously to allow us to derive large amounts of genomic information. This has revolutionized the field of molecular diagnostics and has allowed us to think about testing for things for which we would never even have conceived only a few years previously. Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center has been a great place for me to do my surgical pathology fellowship because of um, the subspecialized, structured, um, high intensity nature of the year so that I've greatly broadened my experience along a lot of different areas. Every single day there is a session of formal educational activity which takes the form of either a lecture or um, a session at the microscope. I've had lots of opportunities to engage in clinical research, both 
um, in the like cutting edge area like molecular pathology but also in the more traditional strengths of morphology and immunohistochemistry. The kind of cancers that you will see in any institution we see by the dozens and it gives us the opportunity to learn by experience, which is such a critical part of pathology. This center has always been at the forefront of diagnostic innovation. One of the nice experiences we have working here is to be a part of research that identifies uh, novel findings about tumors that can be practically implemented. We play an integral role in the treatment of our patients, in guiding the approach of the surgeons, uh, of the medical oncologists um, to ensure that every patient gets the best care uh, that we can provide. And we're very proud of the major contributions we make to the care of this um, very challenging patient population.